Toni Storm is one of the best women's wrestlers in the world. She's a former AEW Women's World Champion and one of the top females in the company. But in her WWE run, she went on quite the roller coaster. What started off as a promising run ended up falling very flat and led to Tony Storm suddenly quitting the company. We're going to be talking about all that and more today, but before we get into the video, make sure to like and subscribe. I'll give you until the three count. Let's do it, Stu. Rich Rose hooks the leg. There it is. Hope you beat the count, and let's get into the video. Tony Storm was born in Australia and began training to be a wrestler at age 13. When she turned 18, she moved to the UK to get further training and she would be trained by Dean Allmark while in the UK and become a mainstay of the British wrestling scene. She wrestled for various companies in the UK such as Progress and ICW and she even worked GFW's UK show truly the pinnacle for any professional wrestler. But by 2016, and by just the age of 21, Tony Storm had wrestled the likes of Mickey James, Kaylee Ray, Piper Niven, Tyler Bate, Candice LeRae, and Kyrie Sane. In 2016, she would go to Japan to wrestle for the first time, wrestling for Stardom, and in her first televised match for Stardom, and only two weeks into her Stardom appearances, Tony Storm defeated Io Shirai to win the SWA Undisputed Women's World title, and Tony Storm would have a historic reign with this title belt, becoming a top dog in stardom. And for the next couple years of her career, Tony Storm would go back and forth between the UK and Japan, as well as various other countries and promotions, truly a workhorse of the independent scene at the time. On the 31st of March 2017, Tony Storm would make her first WWE appearance at WrestleMania Access against fellow UK wrestler. Ginny, a match I actually saw live, I was there. WWE had just partnered with Progress and were exploring their options with a lot of British wrestlers and wrestlers from that scene. It was also this year that WWE were planning on running a women's tournament called the May Young Classic, which they did run and which Tony Storm was of course a part of. After defeating Aisha Raymond, Lacey Evans and Piper Niven, she had made it to the semi-finals of the tournament, where she faced and was defeated by Kairi Sane, who of course went on to win it. Following this, she would return back to Japan and the UK. UK. On the 28th of March 2018, she finally lost her stardom belt to Viper after 612 days of holding the title. She is still to this day the longest reigning champion of that belt. That year she would also make her return to the WWE as part of the second Mae Young Classic and this time things were a little different because after defeating Ginny, Hiroyo Matsumo, Mia Yim, Miko Satomura and Io Shirai, she won the Mae Young Classic in 2018 and had cemented herself as one of the best women's wrestlers in the world. Tony Storm would return to the WWE again that year, this time for NXT UK that had just formed, which she would be a regular appearer on and she would regularly appear on NXT UK TV. She was part of a tournament to crown their first women's champion, which she made it to the finals of, where she was defeated by Rhea Ripley. But hey, Tony Storm, our, our Tony's pretty good in tournaments, isn't she? Got a good track record going. The two would have a rematch at NXT TakeOver Blackpool in January 2019, where Tony Storm would win the NXT UK Women's Championship from Rhea Ripley, her first title win in the WWE. Also, her only title win in the WWE, but we're getting ahead of ourselves. Also, fun fact, but I was actually really mad about Tony Storm winning this. Not Tony Storm winning, but rather Rhea Ripley losing. Listen, I've been a big Rhea Ripley fan from the start. Look at these tweets. Tony Storm would hold the title for 230 days before losing it to Kaylee Ray at NXT UK TakeOver Cardiff 2019. She was part of the interbrand women's match that year at Survivor Series and also entered the 2020 Women's Royal Rumble match lasting 18 minutes. And she was doing all this while still wrestling on the independent scene. She was wrestling across the UK, Europe and Japan still at times. But soon after this, WWE would tie her down full time and she would join the NXT brand and would officially say goodbye to the independent scene. And it seems as though that from this moment on, WWE didn't really know what to do with her. Her NXT run wasn't bad per se, it was just quite forgettable, it wasn't very memorable. She did some cool stuff like being part of war games, and she wrestled for the title at NXT Vengeance Day in a triple threat against Io Shirai and Mercedes Martinez which she lost, and also challenged 
one-on-one -on -one against Io Shirai for the title on TV, also losing still. But again, she just wasn't really involved in the top storylines that much, and again, her run just wasn't too memorable in NXT. And in the summer of 2021, she was called up to the main roster, joining the SmackDown brand. And I can tell you right now that despite the fact she was called up, she was still called up with pretty much zero plan. She had her first match in July, defeating Zelina Vega, but from July when she got called up all the way until December of that year, she had only wrestled three matches on TV. She was barely appearing on TV, and to make things worse, the three matches she had had on TV totaled up to just seven minutes. She had wrestled for just seven minutes from the moment she got called up on TV. Just insane. In December of 2021, she would actually get into a program with Charlotte Flair, who was the SmackDown Women's Champion. And this is where we would see the infamous pie segment. Charlotte Flair was just doing a classic promo on Becky Lynch and the SmackDown Women's title scene when she was interrupted by Tony Storm. They'd engage in a back and forth on the mic and eventually get into a scuffle, which ended with Charlotte Flair smashing a pie over Tony Storm's face. Following this, they stared down and Tony Storm didn't do anything anything about it. She had just been kind of embarrassed, humiliated, and buried by Charlotte Flair in this segment. The segment was completely unnecessary, and there was no reason to make Tony Storm look like this on TV and portray her character this badly. The next week though, WWE would sort of right their wrong when Tony Storm got a receipt and got her revenge on Charlotte Flair by pieing her back. This led to a title match the next week between the two, which Tony Storm won by DQ. They'd have a rematch again two weeks later, this time with Charlotte Flair winning clean in what was actually a pretty good match. And what was also actually Tony Storm's final ever appearance on WWE TV. She would do a couple house show matches, but on the 29th of December 2021, just five days after her title match against Charlotte Flair, Storm requested her release from the WWE and it was immediately granted and she was gone from the company just like that. In an interview six months later with Renee Paquette, she explained why she left the WWE and what led to her departure from the company, stating the following, I didn't feel that appreciated and I just felt like WWE at times didn't have very much respect for me. I feel like over time, they crushed my love for wrestling. It just wasn't even wrestling anymore. You're not even allowed to say wrestling. Tony Storm would also go on to state that in that infamous segment with Charlotte Flair where she got pied, it was also reportedly pitched that she was going to get stripped by Charlotte Flair. Another completely unnecessary thing to do to Tony, and no reason to humiliate her, embarrass her like that on TV. And obviously, while it didn't happen, this probably played into the fact why Tony Storm didn't feel respected at all in the WWE, that they were willing to go that out their way just to bury her for no reason. Tony Storm does find herself doing pretty well for herself now. Following her exit from the WWE, she would sign for AEW. She had a brief AEW Women's World title reign before losing it to Jamie Hayter, and finds herself in the Outcast faction alongside Soraya and Ruby Soho. 